Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips and tricks and time management related to succeeding with your examination in your very first attempt. Well, in this particular tutorial, we are still in the chapter 5 talking about the sample questions from the set A. Today, we shall continue to see some more remaining questions from this particular chapter 5 and try to find the tips and tricks related to it. The very next question we have on our screen is talking about question number 33. You are testing a mobile application that allows users to find a nearby restaurant based on the type of food they want to eat. Consider the following list of the test cases. Priorities. That is a smaller number of a smaller number means higher priority and dependencies so i think we can quickly recall that uh, we have discussed about this that there could be a priority which is the first thing to always see in a test case uh, test execution schedule and then we do talk about the dependencies as far as high independent is uh, available you should run then then high dependent then medium independent then medium dependent and then, of course, low independent and low dependent, which simply means if you have as far as a table has a high priority independent test, we do not go to remove the dependency of another high test. We try to run that independent one first and then go for dependence to remove and then run the high. OK, then same way this should be followed for medium and low as well. Now, let's quickly read the table and try understanding what information has been provided to you. So in this table, if you see, we have got five test cases. And they have just given you some of the information like select the type of the food, select the restaurant, uh, get directions, call restaurant, make reservation. So whatever it is, I don't care because these names are purposefully given to get deviated with respect to your priority and dependency. So that you start thinking that, okay, isn't it that I should make a call first and then do the reservation or something like that. So please be irrespective of the information provided to you because test execution schedule that is running the order of the execution totally depends on the priority and the dependencies. So never get distracted by these information. In fact, I'm not. So I'm going to the next column in priority. If you see test case three is on the highest priority because they told you the smaller the number, the higher the priority is. So test case three is on high, whereas test case two and four are on medium priority and test case one and test case three on the lowest priority. So first of all, have a kind of intention in your mind defined that what should be the order of execution. If I just consider the priority at this point of time, uh, I would have my test case three executed first, then test case two and four in any order because they are on the same level of priority. And then again, test case one and test case five in any order. That is again, they are on the same priority. So they should be executed last. But on top of it, they have given you some sort of dependency, which is logical dependency. And if we see that test case one has no dependencies and others have dependency on something. So of course my eyes should always go to the first priority test that is test case three. And I see that it is dependent on test case two. So that means I, no matter what, I need to run the test case two first. But if I go back to test case two, I see that it is medium priority and dependent on test case one. That means whatever it is, I have to forcefully run test case one as first then i have to run test case two and then i will come back to the test case three to be executed so it's being enforced to us based on the dependency that this is what the order should i follow all right so first of all get your answer that what should be the order of execution based on priority and dependency in this case of course my test case execution order is tc1 tc2 tc3 and when i'm done with that then my next priority is test case four and test case five. That means these tests will be executed in the same order as they are written. Okay. Now, what exactly is the cushion? So not necessarily what we always learn is only the cushion in the examination. So the question says, which of the following test case should be executed as the third one? See, now I was understanding that why it is so simple and why we don't have the complication yet third one that means they're not asking you which will be the first test case which will be executed right they are asking you the test case which will be executed as third so after having your final order of execution that is one two three four five of course it is easy for me to detect that which is the third one which will be getting executed 
but again not necessary this will be the final order totally depends on scenario so in this case in my case in this particular question of course it is going to be test case 3 which will be executed on the third position but depending on the scenario and conditions like dependencies and priority you may have any other order uh, in the real exam and that is where you need to be considerate about what is being asked to you are they asking you the first second last or whatsoever so with that context if you look at the options i think we can have the straightforward answer the right answer to this particular question is a test case 3 will be the test case which will be executed as third in this entire sequence of execution schedule and with that we can easily conclude with the right answer right so that's all this particular question is very clear and we can move on to the next one the next question we have here is uh, a match the following again that's a very interesting thing because if you remember we discussed something on the testing quadrant and here the question says consider the following test categories from one to four that is on your left and the agile testing quadrants from a to d i think this 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 type of question again doesn't require any kind of tips and tricks and justification the better you remember what happens in each of these quadrant will bring you to the answer okay so it does not require any kind of justification any kind of tips and tricks there's nothing here all you have to do is remember what happens in the four quadrants and what are the other attributes like whether it is business facing critic critic the product or technology facing and supporting the team what levels are getting conducted as a part of these quadrants so let's start doing the match because i know what exactly do they stand for so the very first one usability we pretty much know usability gets executed as a part of quadrant three which is business facing and usability also critics the product because here we try to fulfill the need of the customer and uh, mainly to support the product then two component testing of course blindly is a part of the quadrant one it is technology facing and supports the development team whereas functional testing that means any other functional testing which is uh, uh, going to be part of the executions in terms of uh, integration system etc will be performed as a part of quadrant two that is business facing supporting the development team and again development team here does not mean the developers it means combination of developer designer that is internal team not about the customer okay or not about the product fulfillment it's more about getting satisfaction and finally the reliability testing which is a non-functional test and you should remember that all the non-functional tests are generally conducted as a part of quadrant four technology facing and it critics the product so except usability everything else as non-functional testing will be conducted in the quadrant four and with that being said the very straightforward uh, to the point the right answer for this question is a one goes to c two goes to a three goes to b and four goes to d and that's a simple match what we can really perform with respect to this information. So sometimes things are very straightforward, no tricks, no tips required, but just the knowledge what you have from the syllabus could be picked up as one of the question. So let's move on to the next. And we are looking at the next question as question number 35. And uh, this question uh, we covered as a part of our regular tutorial also. This is about the risk analysis. During a risk analysis, the following risk was identified and assessed risk is response time is too long to generate a report risk likelihood is measured as medium impact is measured as high so one way it's a high risk response to risk is also given to you an independent test team performs uh, performance testing during system testing and the second suggestion we have is a selected sample of end users perform alpha and beta acceptance test before the release all right so what measure is being proposed to be taken in response to the analyzed risk? I think we just need a little bit of recap from what you have covered. There are four responses to the risk. One, risk acceptance, risk mitigation, risk transfer, and risk contingency. Risk acceptance means that we know there is a risk, and so far we don't know what exactly to do. In fact, there is no one else we know that can handle this risk better. And we just try to accept the risk saying that we cannot do anything about it whereas when we talk about the risk mitigation it simply means that we know what to do and we propose the steps as a part of the risk assessment that what can be done as we know what is supposed to be done to mitigate this risk that means you are proposing ways to mitigate this risk 
Similarly, when we talk about the risk transfer, here we don't know what to do, but there is someone else who knows what to do. For example, I can hand over a risk to the customer support team to handle this particular thing better, right? And we don't propose what to do. We just say that, hey, you are someone who can handle this better because this is related to something which will happen in production and we are not sure how to mitigate this right now. So we don't even tell them the steps because we don't know how to handle this. We just transfer the risk to someone better who can handle this and propose ways to mitigate it. So this is where you will not have the response as steps to perform, but just transferring risk to someone else, okay? And the contingency is more of like preventive or an action to be taken when the risk happens to overcome the impact as soon as possible. It's more of like having an insurance of your life or having an extinguisher at home just in case of fire occurs, right? That's contingency. So I think in this particular question, it's very clearly described that you have a response to risk, which is stating that what steps needs to be performed in order to mitigate this particular risk. And that concludes to the right answer for this question as C, that is risk mitigation, because as a part of risk mitigation, we determine the steps to be taken in order to mitigate the risk. So this is not contingency, this is not transfer, and this is not the uh, the other option, which is acceptance. So put together, these are some of the crazy questions which you can expect as a part of the examination. Sometimes they're very straightforward. Sometimes it could be a little tricky to handle. Have the patience, have the attention to detail to conclude with the right answer in one go. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your questions and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.